Since COVID, there's been a massive demand of consumers wanting to understand the indoor air quality in their home. Now, before I jump into our recommendations, I first want to ask, do you actually need an air quality monitor? Because the reality is, is there's a number of free apps that can give you the latest air quality information in your area. If you're in the US, you have the Air Now app from the EPA, which is absolutely free. You also have air quality data inside Google Maps. And for those outside of the US, the IQ Air, Air Visual app is great, has really good, clean UX, and is most importantly free. Now, if you want more than the latest information in your area, then you'll want to look and invest in, in a sensor like this. Right, let's jump into my recommendations. So what is the best air quality sensor for most people? And I'm gonna choose this, a CO2 sensor. Whilst most people might be tempted to go straight in for a particle sensor, you're actually gonna find it more useful to get a CO2 sensor like this. Now, whilst a CO2 monitor like this only tracks the levels of CO2, a study in 2021 showed that the CO2 levels can be a great proxy for the levels of risk of COVID in a room. In basic terms, the CO2 levels will tell you how well a room is ventilated. High levels of CO2 are also linked to poor decision-making, slower reaction times, and increased tiredness. Now be wary of cheap CO2 monitors as they can be inaccurate. You always wanna go for a CO2 monitor that uses an NDIR sensor. NDIR is short for non-dispersive infrared sensor. Now the CO2 monitor that I'm gonna recommend is this, the Aronet 4. I paid $250 for it back in 2022. At the time of this video, it was $170. And whilst it's not cheap, it provides you with years of life with just one battery thanks to its e-ink display. It's portable, you can just throw it in a bag, it has a smartphone app that links to it so it'll update you when the CO2 levels change. Now since reviewing this device, I've also reviewed a budget device from Smart Air called the CO2 Monitor. This device also uses an NDIR sensor, so it's very accurate, but does have a reduced battery life of 30 days versus the years you get with the Aronet 4, but it is much cheaper at $70. CO2 sensors are great for understanding the risk. There will be some situations when you do wanna know how many particles are in your room. And for this, you're gonna need a PM sensor, short for particular matter sensor. Now, out of all the sensors that we've tested, the most accurate sensor at this time is this, the Purple Air Zen. I first heard about Purple Air from the Californian South Coast AQMD, and they test a ton of air quality monitors and compare them to reference devices. And the Purple Air devices stood out as being as accurate as many of the devices that cost upwards of $10,000. Now, back in 2020, we chose this, the Purple Air Indoor Sensor, which uses the PA1 sensor. But since then, we've upgraded to get the Purple Air Zen sensor as well. As it uses two sensors, it's slightly more accurate. When we first started using the Purple Air sensors, it was pretty easy to pull the data from the devices. You can just download it directly from their website. Since then, they've changed it so it's an API only service. Whilst you can see the current air quality with the LEDs, as we can see here, and you can see it on the map, it's a little trickier for non-technical people to pull the data. There's also no app like many of the devices on here, so just something to be made aware of. Now, we developed our own software that uses the Purple Air API to pull from our sensors when we're testing our air purifiers. This enables us to see the levels of PM1, PM2.5, and PM10, and how quickly they drop when we're testing devices. One of the things I like about the Purple Air sensors is the PM sensors themselves are user replaceable. Considering that these PM sensors have moving parts, they do have a maximum lifespan of four years, so they will fail eventually. And the fact that you can just swap them out is really, really good. Currently, you have two varieties of the indoor sensors. We have the Purple Air Touch and the Purple Air Zen. The Zen uses two sensors, so slightly more accurate. Uh, but is more expensive at just under $300, while the Purple Air Touch is slightly cheaper at $200. So if budget is no concern, go for the Zen, but the, the Touch is really, really good. And both of these sensors are the most accurate sensors you can get right now without investing in reference devices costing 10, 20, $30,000. Now there are some alternatives to purple air and that is these air gradient sensors. Here we have the indoor sensor and the outdoor sensor. Now the team at air gradient reached out to us as they saw that we used the purple air sensors in our tests and they wanted us to look at their devices. 
Now they're very similar to Purple Air. They use high-end PM sensors from Plant Tower. They use gas sensors from Sensorion. Whilst they haven't been tested yet from AQMD, they are used by many universities. There's a ton of research on their website. Now this, the indoor sensor, I'm a big fan of for one reason, and that's because they have a onboard screen. If you compare to the Purple Air sensor, which just has the LED, whilst you can pull the data via the API, it's nice when you have something indoor to actually be able to see exactly what the levels of CO2, PM and TVOC are. Now, pricing is fairly similar with the indoor sensor, which uh, you do get slightly better with this, with obviously having the sensor, but the outdoor sensors are cheaper with Air Gradient. So it's just something to consider. Now, one of the benefits of Air Gradient over Purple Air is that you own all the data. So on Purple Air's terms and conditions, it's a little confusing on who has the data. And Air Gradient have seen a position for them to put their uh, product in, and they say that you own all the data. It's very clear. And their dashboard, their app that you can access is much easier for non-technical people to use. So if you are looking at the Purple Air, I definitely would look at Air Gradient to, to look at. Now, we've already built our software with API, so we're gonna stick with Purple Air, but I think what the guys at Air Gradient are doing is great. I think we need more sensors like this in the community. One thing to be aware of is just be wary of sensors that cost you know, $500 and $1,000 because many of these sensors will use the same PM sensors that you see in the Air Gradient and Purple Air, but you're just paying for lots of extra stuff that isn't actually giving you any more accuracy. So be sure you check out the full list on AQMD to see if the sensor has been evaluated by them because there's no point paying many, many hundreds of dollars if you're just getting the same accuracy. Obviously that changes when you go for reference devices, but these are lab equipment costing 10, 20, $30,000 and just a completely different kettle of fish. Whilst these sensors from Purple Air and Air Gradient are the most accurate sensors on the market, they're not what you define as plug and play for consumers. So I also wanted to look at devices that you just buy from the shop, plug in and just get data straight away. So what is the best plug and play particle sensor? Well, after looking at all the sensors we've tested, I have to choose these two devices, the QP Pro and the QP Lite. Now, whilst they're plug and play, so you just literally buy them, you can plug them and you get your air quality information straight away, they also use really good sensors. Both of the devices have been tested by AQMD and they perform really well in comparison to reference devices. But in comparison to the Purple Air and Air Gradient, they just start working right straight away. There's no setup required, there's no logins and dashboards or anything like that. They both come with app support, so you can set them up with apps, but you can also just use them as they are. Now, if I had to choose between the two I would say that the QP Pro is my favorite the reason being is that you get just a lot more information on the screen while the QP Lite is a little lighter and easier to travel with you have to kind of to slide the the top button at the top to see the information now the downside of these two devices especially compared to the air gradient purple air is that the particle sensors are not user replaceable which means that once this stops working the particle sensor in both of these devices you'll have to throw them away now, Smart Air has heard this feedback and they've brought out a new device. We haven't had a chance to test it yet called the QP2, QP Pro 2, sorry. Now, this has some upgrades of it, but the main upgrade that I see is that the PM sensor is user replaceable. So if it's as accurate as the QP Pro, which I'm sure it is, this is that would be the device that I choose just because you're going to get a lot longer lifespan out of it. For those wanting a plug and play device who mainly use their air quality monitor when traveling, this is the device that I would consider. It's called the Atmo Tube Pro. Now it doesn't have a screen and it works directly with your smartphone app. So you attach it to your backpack or somewhere outside and then it reports to your phone when there is changes in air quality. When I test this device, I was shocked when I went into just a barbecue restaurant and how quickly the levels of PM 2.5 increased just as I was walking into the restaurant. Now, something to be aware of is that I would play around with the settings of how much it records the air quality. If it records too often, the battery will use up very quickly. So try and find a sweet spot so that the battery lasts as much time as possible. Another option to consider is this, the AirView Things Plus 2960. Now it's a bit different to some of the other sensors on here because it also contains a sensor for radon. It uses an e-ink display at, like we saw with the Aronet 4, which means it has a really good battery life compared to the other devices we tested. It can last between eight to 12 months 
on just one set of batteries, which is impressive. It also has a really nice UX in its app and it has its own dashboard that again is really good looking. Now the downside to this device, whilst it was accurate when we compared to other devices, it doesn't record the levels of PM as quickly as say something like the QP Pro. So it only records every 15 minutes. It's also quite expensive at $300, but I do like the look of it. I like its battery life. And I also like the fact that you can use a USB-C cable, which means you don't have to worry about the battery running out. And it also means that the device will act like a hub. So if you have any other air thing sensors in your house, then this might be a device you want to consider. Another air quality monitor to consider is this Aware Elements. Now it's a good looking device. It has app support. You can pull the data off. It tracks PM 2.5, CO2, VOCs and temperature and humidity. It shows the levels on its screen, but also sends that information to the app. Now bear in mind, it doesn't work without the cable. It doesn't have an onboard battery and it's fairly expensive at 210, just under $210. So I wouldn't want to recommend this device over something like the QP Pro where you get battery support and more sensors. I also wanted to look at some sensors that we probably don't recommend, but we've used. This is the Dylos 1700 from Gradco. It's a great uh, accurate sensor, but it, it's quite old at this point. You have to connect it to a computer to pull the data off. So it's just much easier for our testing to use these devices from Purple Air. But back in its day, this was the device to beat. And if you've eagle eyed, you'll notice that we have this in our performance test because I really like the look of showing the, the numbers on the screen as the air purifier performs. Now, another device I wanted to look at is the Humor H150. Now, this is the first sensor that I got for testing air purifiers, and it still works, but the data is tricky to pull off. Uh, the battery runs out fairly quickly, but I still have it in my heart for it, but I wouldn't recommend it today, but I still wanted to mention it. Now, another popular device is this Amazon uh, sensor. Now, these are very popular. They're a good price on, uh, on Amazon. But one of the downsides of it is you can't actually pull the data. So you can see if you have Alexa devices or through the smartphone app, but I can't compare the data to the other devices here. So just for that reason alone, I won't recommend it. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned is about VOCs. I get tons of emails from people asking me which air purifiers are best at removing VOCs. And whilst I have a lot of air quality monitors, I'm not yet confident that the sensors in these devices is accurate enough to give us something useful to share with the world. So all of many of these devices all have VOC sensors on them, but they are just general gas VOC sensors. They'll track all levels of VOCs, including good ones and bad ones. So many people might get one of these devices and say, oh my God, the VOC levels are really high. But in reality, these VOCs might not be bad for you. So it can make people anxious for no reason. So currently there isn't a device that I would recommend for VOCs in this small category. You'd probably have to go with some of these more expensive industrial devices that we're gonna invest in at some point. But currently the set that you can buy as, as a consumer, they're just not accurate enough to give you meaningful information. I hope my list of these air quality sensors really helps, but as always, let me know what you think in the comments and let me know which air quality monitor that you are using, especially if it's one that I haven't covered in today's video.